not messages, but what like notifications or, or method calls the service was receiving as uh, the application was running. Because my typical errors were such something like you know I forget to shut down the service when I want to shut it down, or I or I, I, I try to start it but it's actually already started, and you know these kind of things are, 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 are the sort of common errors. So um, aside from that, the homework should be very hard, but I don't think it's very fast. I think it took the 38 four hours to do it or something like that. Okay. So, so try to do it, and I hope it's not too too difficult. And otherwise, uh, let me know, and you know, ask us questions, and do everything possible. Okay. So, um, what I wanted to do today is uh, talk about something that is slightly more fun. Um, to to be frank with you, is something that I'm slightly less expert than the other things that I've shown you, uh, and it's about uh, uh, animations. Uh, and drawing, okay? And so I, you know, I, I know how to do it in theory, but I have never actually done it in practice for a large application or a complicated application. So that's that's the only drawback. So, but let me tell you uh, how this works. Uh, so the the uh, lecture has two parts. One is on defining your own views, and the other one is on drawing. Okay, they are quite related essentially. So, so far, you have seen uh, that you can, we can use a lot of views uh, that are standard in Android. You know, there is the text view, the edit view, the other view, and the whatever view. The buttons are views, everything is a view. And so you build uh, this hierarchy of views, and they get displayed together. But, you know, what happens if you really want to draw yourself? And actually, uh, I put a link to a very nice tutorial, and what I want to show you uh, in this class, hopefully, or if we start a, a little bit later, otherwise a bit of also of next time, you know, we can play with this drawing part. But the app I had running was uh, um, was this. Uh, um, where is it? Uh, I have too many apps. This one. Okay, so. Um, I, I cannot display it on the emulator, this one. I only have it here. So we should just show quickly. But OK, there is uh, somebody wrote, actually, the, you have the links for the tutorial. You, so you can draw a graph, and you can also animate it very smoothly into another graph. No? So how would you do a view that behaves like this? This is just an example. Another sample code that I want to look at today is code that uh, that animates a compass, OK? And if somebody has a cable, because it turns out I forgot also my Android cable in the office, I can uh, install that viewer. But otherwise, I can do it here. But essentially, how do you define um, a custom uh, view, OK? Let me switch back to the laptop. <laughs> so there are two problems uh, in defining a, a view. So. Um, well, what you do, you use your subclass of the view class, OK? And then there is some topic that I want to skip on in class, because you can look at yourself, that is done for the, for the following purpose. I want to describe it to you, but not go into any detail, because I, I'm uh, not so interested. So you know that when you have your XML file, you can set all sorts of attributes for your view in the XML file. For example, you can say that this is a text view, and the style is the text size medium, and uh, the color, the text color is, uh, and you can specify the color, and you can do everything like that, right? So um, there is a way, essentially, to connect the XML with the view, OK? So essentially, when the view is created, you get this attribute set after. OK, that, that is a way for Android to pass to you whatever um, attributes somebody has declared in the XML. OK, and then you can, um, you, here is an example, OK, you can decide that you want to have attribute name is equal to show text, format is Boolean, you know, you can declare what you can possibly have, eh? and then you can go fish it out. So here is uh, one way to use your view. OK? And you, you see, when you, uh, the, let me say, this is the only part that is important. Sorry, I, I, when I click, it moves. 
let me try if I can highlight. No, I, I don't think I can highlight. But let me just move my mouse around. This is the only important thing. So if you use a text view, you know that you can say text view, and then you write what it is in it. Now, if you write your own view, how do you call it? You use the Java convention of giving the fully qualified name for the class that you, that you want to use. Okay, So your class has to subclass view. And if your class is called pie chart, and uh, uh, you know, the, the full path might be com example custom views charting pie chart. Okay, so this is how you call it. The, your, call your class in the XML. Okay, the rest uh, of the parameters are you know you you can read how it is done in the in the slides, but essentially there is a way to define which parameters you accept, and there is a way. This is uh, how you do it, in which. Uh, uh, you you try to get boolean, get integer, these various comments is because you are trying to read from the attributes if by any chance in the XML these values were defined. Okay, and I don't particularly want to go into a huge detail on uh, on how this is done, just because I don't know there is nothing really very conceptual about it. Um, you can create getters and setters, etc. But rather, I want to uh, focus on two things when you. Create a view, there are two important things that you need to do, really. Those are the two center pieces. Uh, one is that you have to say how big your view is, and the other one is how to, you have, that you have to be able to draw or put stuff on, in, on your view. Okay? So, uh, sorry, I just want to look at this because I. Let me do one thing. Okay, so what's not what I'm not so happy about is that since it's crashed, I, I don't have my. It seems to have lost some of the work that I did on the presentation, which is why I was looking surprised. Okay, so th that's it's crazy. Fine. So. Um, why is this? Sorry, let me just look one moment at this. Really, really strange. Bah, okay, fine. I have to work with what I have. Um, so uh, I just wanted to do things in slightly the, uh, the other, other order. But essentially, uh, the, there are two things. One is measuring how big the view is, which I wanted to tell you first, but it's second because I don't know. I seem to have the old version of the slides. And the other thing that I wanted to show you is uh, how to draw on it. Okay. So when you draw, this onDraw method is past a canvas. So in your code, it will look like, and we will look at code in a moment, but onDraw, and then you, you have a canvas that is passed to you. So the canvas is just, you know, the, the imagine it as the, you know, the the portion of the blank pixel map or whatever map on which you can actually draw, okay, and uh, um, and and you need to draw on it, okay. So you can do various operations on the canvas, and these will create the drawings, okay. And uh, uh, when you do drawing, there are uh, there is a, a notion. So the canvas is the surface on which you draw. And then there is this notion of paints, which are the things that you draw with. So uh, I think paint is a bad name, in my opinion. It should be called something like pen or maybe brush or something like that, you know, because uh, because uh, the paint is what you transfer, it's not what you work with. I don't know, but everybody has their own text. Okay? But essentially, the, uh, you can define paints that contain color, shading, thickness, and these various attributes. I don't know them all, but you know the fundamental ones uh, have some some styles, uh, attributes, colors, or shadings, uh, and it's usually better to define all the paints you want to use in the initializer of the view because it's apparently not not a very fast process to create the paints. Okay, so especially uh, the life life cycle of uh, of the view is the following. Okay, you define the class, but then. Uh, once at least, and every time your phone is uh, screen is resized, there, it, there will be a call to all measure, which is the other important call. So this is a 
These are the two main calls. A call to a measure uh, is essentially telling your view, please decide how big you are. And I will have code in detail that shows you how it is done, OK? And then there will be a call to undraw every time you need to actually redraw the content of the view. This can happen quite frequently, OK? For, uh, you know, whenever you scroll, whenever you do this, and whenever you do that. So it's, it's important to not to create pains every time you draw, because it can be a real drag on uh, garbage uh, collection and allocation, because you are creating a lot of objects uh, uh, that are complicated inside, and you should not be doing it every time you draw. You should do it as a, in an initializer. So for example, this is a, an initialization in which we say uh, that the text paint to draw text is a new paint. It has an anti-alias flag set, set so that the text is not pixelated. OK? You can set it in a specific color, which is the text color. Uh, and then uh, you can, uh, um, uh, you can uh, try to set, set it some te to some text size that you like. Uh, this is uh, taken from an application that tries to draw a pie chart, OK? Uh, the pie paint is to, to draw the, pay pa the uh, pie chart. And you know you get another paint that is anti-aliased. It has a style fill, so that if you draw a, a triangle, it will be filled, right? It won't be empty. So this paint is not really paint, but it's the attributes of the, of, of the brush, essentially, in my mind. But whatever you want, OK? Um, and and so, so you have all these paints that you can create and they, that you can use to draw with. OK? And, and this is why the, the thing is out of order uh, in this uh, presentation. I'm sorry. But um, on measure is called to decide how big the view is. So essentially, when, when I think you have already in, uh, the idea now that the views on the screen form a hierarchy, right? They form a sort of tree. And Android, at some point, in some complicated way, needs to go up and down in this tree in some way to decide where everybody's positioned and how big everybody is, OK, in this hierarchy of views. OK? It does not know at the beginning, and so it's doing these passes over the tree. It can do one pass, or it can do multiple passes occasionally, OK? So, uh, when uh, uh, the on measure is called to ask you to please decide how big your view should be, okay? And you're passed a measure specification that actually are integers. So you're passed to measure spec x and width and height. So these are two integers. You will see an example of code later, okay? But these are integers that encode in complicated ways both a size and also a wish. And they work as follows, okay? If they say exactly, they want uh, uh, they want you to be that big, you know? The, uh, for example, you know that quite often in, in XML you, the, you create a view and you say match parent, okay? That would create an exactly, you know? Because it's not up to you to decide how big your view is. Uh, somebody said match parent, so the parent is that big, so you should be expanded or fill at least the, fill exactly that amount of space, okay? And if it's too little space, then you're in trouble. If it's too much space, then you should... Uh, you know, decide where you want to put, uh, uh, you know, the, how it is called, the, the, the um, I mean, the, the, the margin, essentially, you know, where you do want to, do you have, want to add white space on the left or on the right, top or bottom, and how much? It's up to you to decide, right? Suppose you want to draw a pie chart or an apple or whatever you want to draw, they tell you how big the space is. If, you, if your apple is smaller, well, you have to decide whether to stretch its center or do whatever you want. It's up to you, okay? Um, at most means uh, that uh, uh, they, uh, they give you a maximum size, but you can go smaller. This is typical in wrap content. Unspecified, it means that they ask you how big you want to be, and, uh, and they try to accommodate you. One thing that you should notice is that there is no guarantee that you will be called only once. This Android layout algorithm uh, is trying to do its best. And uh, uh, in some occasions, it may call you multiple times with different uh, size specifications. I've seen it happen. It's rare, but I've seen it happen, OK? So you can do whatever you want. And once you decide how big you should be, you have to do call set measure dimension, OK? So this is one of these things that are boring but necessary. So this is an example of on measure, OK? We know that we want to be 100 by 100 if we could. But now we get uh, in the call to one measure this width measure specification and height measure specification. 
So as I tell you, these are two integers, but they contain packaged uh, both of the wish and the size. So you sort of say with mode and with size is equal to get mode and get size. Okay, so the, you want to you get the size and the mode. The mode is this uh, uh, at most precise or yes. Mode is mode is what we had on the previous slide. Exactly at most or unspecified. Okay, so the logic is this for the width. If the mode is a measure spec exactly, then you know, well, sorry, but I have to follow the instructions. Okay, width is width size, is not desired width. If the mode is at most, then I take the minimum between desired width and width size, because I cannot go above that, but then I can have up to 100, okay? And if the mode is uh, um, the, the other one, which is anything, then I can say how big I want to be. You do the same for height, and then you set with the measure the dimension of width and height. It's very boring code, but it's a quite fundamental code because, uh, you know, almost always when you draw, you need to decide, uh, for example, do you, do, do you want a square view, do you, how big you want to try to be, and then you have to know exactly how big it is so that you can place things correctly in the view. So, so it's an uh, unfortunate, but uh, uh, works that way. Okay. When you draw, you have the canvas and paints. Okay, paints are initialized um, by uh, uh, you know is, are objects that, that have attributes. So you do that in the initializer. This is again an example. Okay, and uh, then you draw, uh, which uh, is done by implementing the method on draw, and actually. Um, Sorry. Ah, sorry. Okay. So um, here you call super on draw canvas in case there is anything to be done by by the you know by the by the super class. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, this is try to draw a, a pie chart. So it's drawing first of the shadow of the pie. Uh, and then it draws the various slices, okay? So I don't want to go into incredible detail here because I have a better example later that I want to show you, okay? But uh, uh, see, for example, um, when I want to paint a particular slice, I do the following. I set a shader. Um, oh, sorry. I, I prepare a paint, and then I draw an arc, okay? And the draw arc... If you read the specifications of draw arc, for example, it's one of the values uh, instruction uh, methods you have. But in draw arc, you give it essentially uh, there is an ellipse, okay, and you can say uh, from which angle to which angle you are drawing the arc. Okay, so this would draw this arc, and then there is a way to say that the arc should include the center, and if the arc includes the center, then you will be drawing this. Okay. And if the paint with which you are drawing it has the fill attribute set, then you would actually be drawing this. Okay? So essentially, there is a very large set of instructions to draw. There is draw arc, draw line, draw circle, draw this, draw that. Um, and so there is no, you know, there is no general way, but uh, actually to read those, uh, we, will, we will be doing some of them in slightly more detail. Uh, but essentially, there is a very large set. You have to read those, and you have to use them when you like. Okay? So you can... Uh, of course, uh, there is draw arc, but there is also draw text, uh, draw line, draw circle. Okay, so there are multiple things. You, I mean, there, there is a whole set of them, and you, you basically you can draw what you want. Yes. Canvas is given to you already, okay, and you have to decide to draw on it. So essentially. You don't decide uh, really in this way, way when you are, uh, well, uh, we'll go over uh, that uh, later. But essentially, your, your method on draw is called when Android decides that, that your view must be drawn, okay? And gives you a canvas to draw on, okay? And, and now you have to draw on, on that canvas, okay? Uh, you, you can be sure that on measure has been called before. So a typical thing that you do in on measure is not only that you set uh, uh, if you if we can go back to one measure one moment, not only you say set measure dimension width and height, okay, but this width and height uh, typically, at least in 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 the code I've been writing often, 
these int and write, in width and height are object variables of, of your whole view. So that once you set them in this way, you also remember how big you are, the canvas is. So when, right, so when you get the canvas in the on-draw method, you know how big it is. And so if you want to draw the pie chart in the middle of it, you know that this pixel here is width by two divided by two and height divided by two, right? And then you can do the math of how big the pie needs to be uh, given the size of the rectangle that you have to draw with, et cetera, et cetera. So it's laborious, right? Because uh, it's you know lots of small details to get things drawn properly, but uh, but but it's uh, not uh, very very deep. Um, okay, and now. Um, when uh, uh, the point is this, when you define the on draw method, uh, you you are simply saying how you should be withdrawn, but you're not saying you know you're not withdrawing anything, right? Because you're not in control of when to withdraw stuff. The only way to cause a withdraw is to take a view and give it to the invalid uh, call the invalidate method on a view. When you call the invalidate method on a view, uh, you are basically telling Android to please schedule a withdrawal for your view as soon as possible. So Android in the in the main thread, okay, it has a queue. It has a looper. I think we did the concept of looper in, in one of the previous classes. The looper is this thing that can contain a queue of things to do, right? You can post variables to it and you can also post messages to it. So when you say view dot invalidate, Android will enqueue in its own looper, in, in in the looper of the UI thread the request to call the on-draw method of the view that you have invalidated, okay? So that's how you cause the, the, the redraw, okay? And we will be using now in, in, in doing animations this ability that, you know, you write on-draw on once and for all, but then every time you want, you can, you can call invalidate, and every time you call it, it will draw it, yeah. So, yeah, we're trying to pass like a game with kind of no, we will be doing something exactly like this, uh, you know, given the time. I'm sorry it took a bit of time at the beginning, but essentially let me say a very simple, a very simple way to do it, okay? You could say in uh, on draw, um, you can say get to the current time in milliseconds and draw my ball uh, at a height that depends on the time because it's bouncing up and down, okay? And then in some other way, you can say, you can give an invalidate message, you can trigger invalidate, you know, 50 times a second or 20 times a second, however frequently you want. And that will cause 20 withdrawals, uh, withdrawals a second. The on the method stays the same. It just reads the time and decides the height of the ball. You know, that, that the, the piece of code stays the same and it does not call itself. But somewhere else, you continue to post these uh, invalidate messages, uh, you, you continue to trigger these invalidates uh, that causes withdrawals. And this is very similar, uh, uh, I mean, this is done in a more sophisticated way, the animation that I showed you of the diagrams, but the idea is basically this, okay? So, so uh, any, a very good question. Any other question? I should also tell you the following, okay? That uh, uh, there are two ways to draw. Yeah, because everything is complicated. No. But uh, unfortunately, yes, there are two ways to draw. This way to draw is perfectly fine for, you know, low performance games or normal games, graphs, uh, uh, animations, uh, all of these. Uh, there is also a very high performance way to draw that, for example, uh, Imagine you have to, you know, get hold of the camera, get hold of a surface to which you can uh, post a preview of the camera in real time, and imagine that uh, then you want to do transformation to the camera pixels of the, in real time using maybe OpenGL and other things that you might uh, want to do, okay? That's done in a slightly different way. That's done via, um, via not a, a preview, but a surface, uh, a surface view, okay? And using the surface view is more complicated, but what it gives you the ability to do is essentially using a separate thread for controlling the drawing. And I didn't want to. I didn't want to get into that first. Okay. I've uh, personally I've, I've used that a lot, but unfortunately, uh, but, uh, but I've used that essentially because in some of the work I've done, I work with images that come from the camera, so I don't really, you know, play a game on this surface view, even though it would be possible, I guess. 
But essentially, I use it to to post bitmaps that I get out of the camera. Okay, that's uh, that's uh, how I've been using it. Now, I wanted to show you some of the code, and so these, uh, uh, you know, I need to restart Eclipse because it also crashed, of course. Um, but it won't last uh, so long uh, to 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 start, I guess. Uh, is there any uh, any question here? So I know that a lot of you actually must be way more expert than me in drawing stuff because uh, how many of you are doing uh, in the games major, by the way? Oh, okay, huge number. Oh, okay. Let me use this time by telling you. So uh, we hosted uh, the people from Plantronics a few days ago um, on Tuesday, right? And they came up to uh, and they had this very interesting. Uh, 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 Bluetooth uh, um, uh, earpiece uh, that also could uh, transmit back to a, to a paired device the orientation of your head. Okay, and uh, they are willing to give us. Uh, so they have an iOS interface app and also some uh, uh, another interface app which I forgot about. But they have iOS and Android is coming in two weeks. Okay, so there is an API to talk to this uh, thing and. Uh, um, they are willing to give us some devices. And the question is, do we want them and do we want to use them for projects? I'm not necessarily saying a class projects because, you know, it's a bit late in the class, unfortunately. But if there is any one of you who wants to do a project as part of, you know, a later class or study or even not as part of the class, um, I had some friends, for example, that were very seriously doing a startup some time ago that they wanted to sell to car manufacturers. Uh, they were tracking the position of your head in the car so that you could point uh, some look somewhere and say, um, what's that? And then it would tell you, oh, that's a Mexican restaurant. It's quite good. Uh, and, uh, you know, three stars on these and two stars on that. You know? And then you could say, uh, and what's that street? Oh, that's, you know, so uh, as a way to navigate, you know? And, uh, and so they had to go through a lot of travel, actually, to build these... Uh, uh, eye tracking uh, device, you know, uh, thing. It was you were tracked by a camera that was put somewhere in the car, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if you used uh, something like this, you know, this Bluetooth earpiece, it would be really quite be quite convenient to do that, right? It would be very precise, um, and and so you know, uh, this is just an example of product. But there are there could be various products that that one could be. So you could either do this uh, just because you're interested to play with it. Or you could do this because you think that this might be, you know, the start of a product you want to really build. I can tell you that I've missed in my life a lot of opportunities because I've been a late adopter. Okay, not of everything, of course, but of some things. Um, so, uh, and and I always came to regret it because uh, you know the people who were the early adopters and and dove into something first they had a huge advantage. You know, the people who made the first phone apps, you know, made a killing. Uh, now it's much harder and so on and so forth. So there is some advantage if these uh, people really give us one of these ear earpieces and they, they will actually produce it. There might be a real advantage in being the first to the application app. I've been a late adopter also of Google Glass, but that's just, just because I don't like it in a person-to-person uh, -person interaction. But I think instead it would be a fantastic device to have if you are some, somebody like a, a doctor, a car mechanic. Uh, you know, imagine you're under a car and you're trying to determine uh, you know, whether the blue wire goes into there or into that, you know? And, and if you can collab actually some instruction images uh, uh, on, on the thing without using your hands, which are dirty, um, and without getting away from under the car, it would be, would be fantastic. I think airplane maintenance, all these kind of things. So, I don't know, it's too bad that I didn't start to do that. But so, my, the serious question is this. Manfred is uh, trying to get these devices. Manfred Travel, right? The, the other faculty, the, and the faculty hosting them. Um, and it w w would be very nice for UCSC uh, to be able to, uh, you know, have these devices and establish uh, some relation with them. Um, it could be nice for you. They're looking for interns. Uh, so if this uh, percolates your curiosity in any way, um, you know, we could uh, I sort of encourage you. I think it's an occasion. Not necessarily to do a startup. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure what you can do, but, uh, you know, there must be stuff to do. I posted on Piazza, right? Yeah. So what's your question? I'm asking 
Yeah, I posted already on Piazza st uh, stating this, but if you're interested, you can also shoot me an email now. I have a personal year. Okay, so uh, n now I, 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 I have my code back, and so I wanted to show you two things. Uh, one is the animation, and uh, the other one is how to draw pies. Uh, sorry, how to draw a compass that is am animated by the magnetometer. Okay, and I want to show you these two to you for very different reasons. They essentially explain how to do things in very different ways. So the on measure method, okay, the is uh, here on measure that calls measure, and I don't want to go into it very much because it's not very interesting. I mean, you know, it does what it does. It looks for the maximum size that you give it to it, and it looks for how, and it tries to be square. Not because uh, the compass will be. Uh, so if you if you give it a, uh, a rectangle, the compass tries to op occupy uh, a circle inside, right? So you are trying to find uh, something that can hold your circle for the compass. Okay, so so this is not so interesting. What is interesting, uh, um, especially for you who are uh, great at drawing games, maybe you will find yourself at home. Eh? Uh, what is interesting how, is how to draw this compass. Because, you know, in the end we want something like this. So we want this uh, that says, uh, uh, actually there's an arrow here that says north, uh, and then here we want south, and then here we want west, and here we want east, uh, and then we want some, some tax. Uh, uh, you know, you want to draw something like this for the compass. Where the angle is actually given to you by the mag magnetometer reading. So there are two ways of doing this. The silly way, which is, I guess, what I would invent myself if I were to do it without thinking yet, which is, you know, that you take an N, and then you try to determine where to put it, and you rotate the N to the right amount, and then you take an E, and then you rotate the E, but that's not how people do. Do you know this? I'm just curious. You know that people don't do this typically. They do another thing, OK? They draw with letters upside up, and instead, they move and rotate the canvas underneath. This is, uh, you know, the more efficient way in which people do it. Okay? To me, it's uh, surprising simply because, uh, you know, when I move the canvas, I imagine that it must be expensive to move the, move the bits of the canvas. But I don't think they move the bits of the canvas. It's just, you know, the representation of where you end up that gets processed by translations and rotations. At, uh, at any rate, what you do is this. Um, so. The first part of the code is uh, this boring code that you need in any case, uh, which essentially tells you what, how, what's the radius of the compass and where, and where the center is, because you need to know this kind of thing. Then you draw the background, OK? And so you simply draw a circle with a set, certain circle paint, which, uh, you know, if we run these, actually, does anybody have a cable that I can borrow one second so that I can? Uh, sorry? Micro USB for my phone, yes, so that I can run these. Uh, Thanks. Um, I just want to show you how it looks because it's, I think it's easier than. Uh, um, so this is an application that is part of the textbook. I don't know how many of you got the textbook. Probably not so many, but uh, um, I mean, I do it sort of on purpose. I prefer you to spend money on the phone and, uh, and not on the textbook. Um, that's because I think it's more useful. Um, hold on, it should be showing. So, one sec, let me run it. Um, here, here. So, well, th does it rotate or not? This is just a tutorial, so maybe it does no, not rotate, but I don't understand why. But OK, fine. We don't care so much. This is just a. So, 
you can see from these uh, some some of the drawbacks of, of this code, okay? That uh, obviously it's not trying to get to the right pixel size, okay? Another drawback that I have to tell you is the following, but I, I noticed just because it's becoming a bit easier. I, I used to have a fantastic eyesight. I still have at a distance, but not close by. And I noticed more and more that, you know, since uh, a lot of designers tend to be younger than me, they design, uh, design elements that, you know, I cannot see anymore. And neither me nor a lot of people in my, uh, in my age group. So I just want to caution you against using very, very thin uh, designs in your, in your apps. Uh, I, I know, I, I mean, you can see from what Googlers do, you know, they are typically young and you typically get these completely invisible objects. But at any rate, this is how it, how it looks like. You see there is north with an arrow. So evidently they, they completely messed up uh, the length of the elements and the size of the objects. They, they, this was written some time ago, quite some time ago probably, in a time where pixels used to be bigger, okay? My, uh, my phone has an HD screen. It's not huge, but it's quite good. It's 1200 by, by uh, what is seven, no, more than that. Only 700 in the other direction, but something like that, right? So it's essentially com comparable with my laptop, and so this, you know, the, really does not render very well. There was somebody of you raising the hand? No. Uh, so. For me? Yes. I mean, you're kidding, but on my Android, I don't select the normal font. I select the large font. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I should tell you this anecdote. You know, everybody has, you know, physical limitations. And I'm known for not being particularly um, shy. So the most beautiful thing that I did is this. When I, when I came, was high here, I was in the other building, you know, the concrete building. This is just a beautiful story, so let me take two minutes. I was in the other building, and you know, uh, and so the board started here. It went up to there. I had a really tall student working with me, so this was known as the, the Luca region of the board, and then there was uh, the Marco region uh, that was above that, and it really annoyed me. And uh, um, and then you know, when we moved to the new building, I uh, I say, I, you know, I did this, eh? I made it. And they said, you know, my board should have the upper bar, uh, rim at this height from the floor. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you know how builders work, right? They don't quote every single damn object. They quote one thing, and then they do all the other sequel, right? So these people who built the E2 got one quote for the height of the whiteboards. Guess what? You know, Luca height. All the white parts of the building are installed at Luca height, and nobody <laughs> and nobody complained for a couple of years. And I mean, they had to move out electrical uh, outlets, you know, that because you know they, they thought of putting them up and, and having electrical outlets here. But I want, you know, so they had to go on the side, and. Uh, um, and uh, nobody complained uh, for a few years uh, because if you are actually handicapped, I mean, if you are in a wheelchair and you are sitting down, uh, you can quite write, write quite comfortably now, you know, because uh, I mean, the, the lower rim, so they thought it was an accessibility requirement, and it is, but for me, you know. Really. <laughs> so now you know the story. Okay, that was too good a story, you know. Uh, so so you have the, the white bars are Luca Heist. Fine. So, uh, so I should also patent the Luca form. Okay. Jokes aside, so you do this. You draw the circle, and then you save the canvas, which means uh, saving doesn't mean very much, but it means that you can, from, it's like a defining an undo point in the series of rotations and, and translations that you do, okay? So you save it, and then you rotate it in the wrong way, because you want to write to it upside down, no? So this is how it has to look in the end. So, you know, the real bearing is 30 degrees clockwise. So, you rotate it the wrong way. You rotate it 30 degrees counterclockwise first. You, know, you, you sort of rotate it crack in some way. And then you draw the end right up. Okay? When at the end of it, you will do canvas restore from what you have saved, this will poof, rotate it back, and then you will get the end in the right orientation. So, that's the trick you do. Okay, so from now on, we will be essentially rotating this canvas. And this is initial rotation of, of, of you know, the same right degree, but in the wrong direction, is, is done in such that when we put things in place, the end will be in the right way. We do this first. So we save the canvas, we rotate it in the wrong direction, 
and then we start the drawing. You know, so uh, so so you see, this is uh, probably the error. The text width is the text paint measure text w. You know, we should uh, we should multiply this by fifty or uh, something like that. Um, actually, we could try, but I don't know by what to uh, to multiply it. Measure text. Uh, does it not have a I cannot believe that you cannot specify a font size here. There must be some better way. Um, okay, so so and and then you know the rest of the code is done in this way, you know? You draw a line then you twist the canvas. You draw a line. You twist the canvas. And from time to time, while you draw the while while you twist the canvas, you also put the cardinal letters in place. So uh, you know you you are gonna do twenty four rotations because there are twenty four ticks uh, around it. Okay, so you you rotate it, and when you um, when you um, there is a switch statement. Uh, you know every uh, now and then. Uh, Actually, the case of zero is because we want to draw the, the arrow at the north position, OK? And uh, uh, in the other cases, you choose the direction string, and the draw, you draw the text of the direction string, OK? And otherwise, you just draw a, a tick mark, OK? Um, and then at, uh, at the end, this canvas restore will, will undo the initial rotation, OK? So, so this is one technique for drawing uh, things. It's especially useful with angles, obviously. Okay, not so much. I mean, also with translations, but but with it, I think it's more used for angles. Okay, so this is the the one interesting portion about this application. Instead, the second one is far more interesting. Okay, um, and I put the tutorial. Uh, it's a tutorial that somebody wrote actually that I found really beautiful. And uh, so I uh, I go into some details in order to uh, um, I, I mean you, yeah, I recommend that you uh, read, read what he writes actually uh, as well the, the pointers are on the web page uh, especially the parts uh, that are interesting are two and three and also four but two and three especially okay so uh, the idea is this okay uh, we want to um, we want to animate these lines and draw them. Okay, so he separates the problem in two in a very nice way. He says, "Fine, uh, let's split the problem in these two pieces. If you give me a line, I want to be able to draw it." And so there is part of the code that says that if you give it an array of things, it knows how to draw the line. Okay, the other so uh, so you know if you give it an array of points, and then it knows how to draw the line on the screen and what goes with. The other part of the problem is this. In order to, uh, to do this beautiful animation that I showed in which one line transforms into another, it does in this way. It, every point is not a point, uh, x, y. Actually, it, it was while, when he develops the first tutorial, he just has a, an array of points, and he says, draw this array, and that's a point. The array appears, and there is nothing to it. But the other thing that he does later is this. Instead of a point, it uses a, an object that he defined, and that he defined here as so, well. Mean, Briefly explain it. That is called the dynamics. But dynamics is a point that can have some dynamics attached to it. So it has, you know, some uh, uh, speed and some. Uh, uh, you can uh, modify its acceleration and you can compute its position in various points in time. Okay, so it's an object that can move basically. And so what he's doing is this: the dynamics object uh, he can uh, set it so that you want you want to make it go to another place, you know, and it will accelerate, and you know, there is a certain damping. It's as if uh, these points are pulled by um, by springs uh, that have a certain damping, and so they come to rest in the positions where, where they have to be. Okay? But so they have a, a nicely dynamic inside, but the basic operation is that you can tell them, hey, update your position, no, after so many milliseconds. And they compute where they, should, where they are after so many milliseconds. So you essentially get these points, and you can say, uh, set them to x y. I, I don't know if my names are correct. Okay? We will look at them in the code. But the idea is uh, you can tell them, go to uh, x prime and y prime. So you say, you know, wherever you are, try to go there. Okay? 
And then you can say, I'll take your position of this delta, delta time, and these points will compute where they are. If they used to be here, now they try to be here. And so do, 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 slowly, I mean, they will go there and bounce around. That's what they will do. Okay? So this presents the, the, the division of the task in the code. The dynamics objects are created the animation. But the code that will draw the line will be basically fairly unchanged, right? Because it will have an array. Instead of x, y, it will have an array of these dynamics. But these dynamics have a method that, that returns the x, y. So the difference is very minor from the point of view of how you do the drawing, OK? So there is a very clean division between how you draw and how you animate. Many of you may be familiar with it, I guess, in games. So you may be doing even more sophisticated things, right? But the idea is this. Think of how you can draw objects that don't move around and have a, their own x, y, you know, and, and, and you figure out how to draw those. And then, what, what we have to do is uh, two additional things. One is we have to add the dynamics to, uh, to the points uh, separately from the drawing. And uh, then there is, uh, you know, one more thing that we have to add, and that is uh, we have to add some loop that will, uh, you know, cause many withdrawals to happen so that, you know, the animation happens. But these are essentially the three ingredients that are going to so um, let's look at uh, uh, these uh, uh, dynamics object. Uh, OK, there is a tolerance, which is just, so one catch is that you have to be able to stop, if you don't want to run down the battery, you want to be able to stop the animation. So there is a, uh, some tolerance. After the points come to rest within that tolerance, you decide that they don't need to move anymore, and you can stop the animation. So. You see, they have a uh, current position. They have a target position, as I was uh, mentioning. No. Um, and then they have, you know, the ve velocity, and, and they have a last time, so that you give them the new time, they can compute how much time has passed and where they ought to be. OK? And there is a springiness by which they are attracted to the new position, and there is some damping that, uh, uh, you know, um, moderates the speed. I mean, it's sort of a, you know, it's a decay factor for the speed. So, um, so look at the methods. Set position uh, uh, simply says, uh, um, so this is a bit simpler because instead of having an x, y, these points, they have only uh, a position, y. Well, because in the particular animation he's interested in doing, yeah, the points only can go up and down from one line to the other, OK? In general, you can do it with an x, y, or x, uh, in a 2D space, or you can do whatever you want. But this, in this case, they are, the points go in, in move in a unidimensional space, OK? So this makes it easier. So when you set the position, you know they are there. When you set the velocity, well, OK, fine, you set the velocity. When you set the target position, you set the target. But the interesting method is this update. When, when you update, OK, x is the position minus the target position. I think x is a bad name. It would be more like distance, OK? So if you know the equation of a spring, the force of a spring is the distance times the spring constant, OK? So this is what happens, no? The acceleration is the spring constant times the distance, OK? And then there is an acceleration that is proportional to the velocity, which is due to the damping, OK? And you can do a lot of damping, so you know. Um, it's up to you. This is a normal uh, one. You know that if you are, if you drive a car, uh, the wind speed uh, resistance is proportional to the square of your speed, not to the speed, but to the square of the speed. Because uh, you know every cubic meter of uh, of air in front of the car slows you down proportionally to the speed of the car. You know it's a mass times velocity that comes against you. And in, within a second, uh, the number of these cubic meters that, that crash on your car is also proportional to the speed. So there is a quadratic factor, essentially, for, for a speed. So if you wanted to model damping by, by air speed, you would have a quadratic factor there. But it would not be very good, because if you damp by air speed, you, you damp a lot at the beginning, and then they forever, you know. And then, yeah. That's what you do with a diapason. You, you heat it, but then it goes for really long. OK, so anyway, so the, you updated the acceleration, then you updated the velocity by just using the, the, you know, the Newton's laws, and then you have updated the position in the same way. Fine. And then you have this method, is at rest, that, uh, uh, that simply uh, you know, is done for cutting out the computation. So if you are slow enough 
and uh, so, um, uh, and if you are close enough to the destination, then stop computing, because otherwise we bur turn, burn down the battery. Okay. Great. Now, the main activity. This guy is really good at it, because the main activity is incredibly short. This is basically all the all the code that they visited. Okay, it just um, so there is this line chart view that is described in code in the next file I'm gonna show you. So he has this line chart view, which is what you what we'll be drawing at this, this line chart. Okay, um, and then essentially there are three buttons. And when you press one of the three buttons, you set to the line chart. You call line chart set chart data, and you get it some line data. And the line data is simply given here. You know, there is no complication in, in the code at all. He's simply doing an example. So he's saving these arrays by this way as examples. Okay. So, so this is incredibly simple, uh, the, the main activity code. It's just, you know, you set it to the things, and then the request of that comes because uh, the only part that follows is an orange screen. It goes to a sweet and easy of the text. The text is very good. You get out of this plastic box. Yeah, was, uh, I'm sorry, that's horrible. I never realized. <laughs> uh, 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 so the only important thing is, is set chart data, OK? So in line chart view, there, there is a little bit of interesting code, OK? Um, so let me look at, so you know, this is the view. Public line chart view. Um, sorry, this is the class line chart view, which extends view. There is a runnable here that I'm gonna explain later because it, this is what, what what triggers the, the redrawing many times a second. Let's look at that a little bit later, okay? Um, uh, instead, uh, no, there, there is another boring part, uh, which is on measure. You can look at it if you are interested. You see it ends with a set measure at dimension with height. Let's not look into it, because we, you know, we have seen already of this, some of this code. Okay? And, uh, um, and there is an on-draw method. But let's not worry about the on-draw method. Let's worry first about the set chart data. So imagine that you know how to draw. Let's figure out first what is the sequence of events. No? The on draw, we draw it. And imagine that magically you know how to draw it. But how do we set to the events? It works in this way. Um, it gets the current time, and then it, it does the following. If data points are null, or I mean, this essentially means this if then else, no? If before you had something that really I was either undefined or was uh, or was an array of different lengths. Essentially, if we cannot move it by animation, then I'm sorry that we have to just, you know, set it to whatever we want and draw that. No animation, just boom, draw it. So then in that case, what we do is this. We set the data points to, many dyna to new dynamics. Um, and you see that you both set the position and also the target positions to the same values, you know? So you say, you are here and you should stay here. You are basically nailing these new data points to, to a place, OK? And then you are calling invalidate on the view to cause a redraw. It's a funny name, invalidate, right? You should be like redraw, I guess, but, but they call it invalidate. So the upper, key, the upper portion of the if then s, the if, k, the if clause, is, is fairly simple, OK? You are uh, you're producing this, uh, this uh, array of uh, you are getting this array of data points, and then you are setting the position and setting the target position of these data points, and then you say, draw them. OK? Yeah? There is another problem. Yeah. Uh, so uh, earlier you said, if all these are now, you know, it's very new. Mm -hmm. you know, well, so here you are calling it of yourself. Right? Yeah, yeah. In this case, you you just call it explicitly. Yes, yeah. 
I mean, because he, yeah, it's, he will want to be more in control. So you say, why, why would you, why would you call it? Yeah. So why do you need to call it explicitly? Here is your question. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure out why you call it without our. Okay, so I, you know, another thing I could do is this. I could go here, I could go in the tutorial activity, and when I set the chart data, I could say line chart dot invalidate. That's the other thing I could do. Okay? One of, you do one or do you do the other? In this case, so I sort of make sense to do it this way. Sorry? No, no, you, you can call it. You can call it from wherever. You normally don't have to call it unless you want to update your set. So in many views, you don't have to call it validate. It's uh, the Android that we call it when something happens to it. But in this case, because you are modifying the content of the view, then you need to call it. And you can call it from inside the class or from outside. Yeah, so I, I might have been not fully precise. I mean, I don't know uh, where I have to put it, but but essentially this is uh, okay. Uh, instead, if you can create an animation, then you do the following: you set only the target positions. You don't only you don't also set the current positions. Okay, the current positions are whatever they used to be. You just set the targets. Okay, then you have this uh, poorly named method: the remove callback animator. So let me uh, explain what animator is. Animator is, uh, I, I would like to imagine it like a little red devil for some reason. For me, that's what, how it looks like in my mind. But uh, we can uh, have this ima image of this, you know, uh, like BSD looking like de uh, devil. Uh, it's this uh, thingy, or this gnome, I don't know, but you know, it's this little, little guy, essentially, that uh, um, it will cause a redraw after some delay, right? So there is the looper of the activity of the thread that has a queue, no? And when you say remove callbacks animator, you are essentially saying, please remove all the instances of this animator from the queue. The reason you want to do it is that you might have been animating something already, and you don't want to be doing two different types of animations. I mean, it would be like a little bit of a mess. You want to essentially say, okay, please, now the queue is empty. There is not nothing pending anymore. No animation pending anymore. And then you say post animator. Uh, you see, uh, we saw last time that you have a randomable object that you can post it to a looper. And since here we are in the UI thread, if you simply say post, you are posting this uh, randomable to the UI thread itself. So we are essentially packaging a randomable. This animator is a randomable. It's an object that can run. And we are posting it to the run queue of the UI thread so that it will be run. Complicated, okay? But so there is this random, no, it's not very complicated, but there is this randomable animator that wants to essentially animate one more frame if it gets a chance when you get running. It will do one more frame of animation, okay? And we are sort of saying, okay, remove all the, all, the, all the previous frames, and now let's put this little guy in the queue so that, boom, it will give us the first frame of the animation, okay? So what happens, uh, what is this uh, little guy that animates stuff? What is this, uh, this uh, random world? this animator. Well, private runnable animator is a new runnable that contains a method run. You know, all runnables are like this, I guess. Um, and this method run, what does it do? Well, it takes, you know, the current animation time. For each dynamics, uh, it updates the location of the point to now, you know, with a certain delay, right? So it says uh, to every point, please update yourself uh, to the current time, eh? okay? And then it does uh, two incredibly important things. So, um, no, okay, everything it does is important, so let me go slower, perhaps. It takes the current time, it looks over the points, okay? It updates their position, and then it, it determines whether they are all at rest. Because if they are all at rest, it knows that it does not need to do any further animations. That's going to be the last one. Okay. Then, so it keeps this need a new frame. If it needs a new frame, it posts another copy of itself somewhere far further in the future. So this looper object of the UI thread is really quite powerful. We saw some of it, you know, in the in the last lectures. 
but but it's not simply a damn queue. It's a queue in which you can, uh, you know, aside from the fact that you can remove all the objects of a particular type, you can also say when you post a tweet, you want to be run as soon as possible. But you can post a tweet with a certain delay, and so that's what you do here, right? Um, you post a delayed with a delay of twenty delay of twenty milliseconds to get fifty frames a second, I guess, or something like that. Okay. So post to delayed, you can look at up to the specification, but uh, long delay millisecond milliseconds. Okay. So if you need a new frame, you post a copy of yourself somewhere in the future. Okay. Um, and otherwise. Uh, so, okay, and in all cases, you again call invalidate. Because, you know, we have updated the dynamics of the objects. So these, these points uh, have moved to some other position. And, and when we call invalidate, they will be drawn in the new position. Okay, so that's how you obtain the animation. It's a very, very clean division of, uh, of task between the animation part and the drawing part. So what we did so far is the animation part. Okay? Questions on, on this? Eh? It's it's kind of very neat, not you know, with this uh, runnable that posts itself with a certain delay until it's done animating. I think you know the only thing that you would have to be careful about is this. Suppose you want to do an animation and you want to be able with a button. Uh, actually, it may be instructive to see, um, uh, which I haven't looked at so far. But you know, when you um, Hey, where is it? Sorry. One second. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, I, I, I wanted to see what, what he was using in order to um, to destroy itself. Uh, but it's Strange. He does not do anything special to stop. I, I thought you know, you know that that when you stop, you would purge the queue of all the uh, of all the um, animator objects. Now there must be a non-destroy method of the view. That that when when that is called, then you would uh, you would uh, uh, remove your animation objects. Otherwise, they stay there forever. But but I think he's not worrying for about that. So, so, so that uh, that I, I don't know why exactly he's not. Either I'm missing it and it's in some other place. I don't see it. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, quiz for us, you know, figure out why he doesn't need to worry about uh, um, about uh, the when the view is destroyed. I would have thought that you need to empty the looper of the animator objects. Okay. Um, maybe it's not a problem for him simply because when you stop the view is because you're shutting off the application and so there is nothing else that happens. But in the general case, I wonder whether he needs to take care of that. Okay? Now, now we go to the drawing part. The drawing part, I think we can do only some of it now, but essentially um, it's done in this way. When, uh, when there is a call to undraw, he does two calls internally, draw background and draw line chart. Draw well, background, you can read it if you want. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, slightly less interesting. What it does is that it draws the horizontal lines uh, um, for, uh, for the scale of the graph, right? So, so that's what it does. Um, it's here. Um, and, uh, um, and instead, uh, the other... Um, The, the part that is more interesting is this draw line chart, okay? And, uh, uh, and it works in, in this way. Um, first, he creates a path. So how do you draw a line like this? There are two ways, you know. You can, well, there are many ways, I guess. But one way would be to draw many segments. But, uh, you know, that's probably not the best. There is a notion of a path in, uh, in uh, the drawable library, right? Um, so a path is, uh, is uh, 
is a sequence of points that are to be connected by a line using a certain frame. No? So you can uh, define these in a single way. Not only, but if you, um, if you want, uh, you can create uh, a smooth path uh, using a, um, a Bezier type of smoothing, okay? So the way, this is uh, what creates a smooth path, uh, given a maximum value, uh, the maximum value here, you have measured it before, it's the maximum value of any data point. It's not so central to the issue, okay? But what you do is this, essentially. You take a path, uh, actually, the, uh, maybe I should have shown you the previous tutorial, the tutorial 2, which has just uh, you know, a non-smooth path where the code is a lot simpler. But essentially, um, you do the following. For each, you, for each i, where I, i is a data point, okay, I get the x position of the data point. And I get the y position as, you know, data points y, which give these data points y, is a, is a dynamics object. You see, data points is a dynamics vector. So it's a vector of these things that can move. So I take the i data point and I ask it for its position. And it will tell me the position because it's moving. But, OK? So I get to the y position and then I get, you know, the next point. And what this is doing, let me cut to the, to the, um, let me cut to the, to the key place. OK? The key place is this. Uh, path.cubic2. This is a way in which uh, once you have a path that has been going from here to here to here to here, you can say that the next point is cubic2 here. So you are giving it the next point, but since you want this to be rounded, you also give it, you know, these two handles of, of the smoothing. That can be, you know, try to smooth it in such a way that it goes there. So there is like here a little bit of calculation of what these control points are for the, smooth, for the cubic smoothing. I mean, some of you that use these, uh, um, you know, Photoshop or GIMP or other image editors in which you can draw these, Bezier, these the curves in which, you, you know, you have the control points and you can tweak these handles of the control points in order to get exactly the smoothing that you want. So that's what's happening there, essentially, okay? Uh, in the previous tutorial, that was a little bit simpler. Instead of cubic two, there was uh, another uh, way of doing it uh, that now I forgot. But I think it was called something like go to or uh, point two. No, line two. I'm sorry. It was simply called line two. And if you say line two instead of trying to smooth, you just not the draws a straight line to that. So paths are these, you know, rich objects. Uh, where you can draw the path, but you can also define the smoothing. You can also define other things very nicely. You can define, uh, for example, if they, if they have to be shadowed, if they have to cast a shadow, you know, you can define it on the path, and you can do all these various things, okay? So this function will create a smooth path and will return the path to you. And uh, once you get the path, uh, you say canvas draw path. And you know it also says uh, the, that uh, with this paint, and you say uh, you set a shadow layer to that paint to do a bit of shadow, and that's most of what what it takes. There are some other functions here, but they are not very essential actually. You know, as get x gets or get y essential. So the the core of what's going on is with what I described. Okay. So, um, so essentially, uh, this gives a, this is a very nice prototype of how to do animation. Uh, break your code up in various portions. One portion draws points if you know where they are, and another portion implements the dynamics. Uh, and uh, then there is uh, these uh, um, this uh, randomable object that, that animates uh, that you continue to that we repost itself as many times as needed uh, to UI thread with a certain delay to cause the animation. Okay? And, and these are essentially the ingredients you need. Um, I recommend you reading the tutorial. You know, I, I, uh, I, did, uh, you know, I had to learn these things. So I read a lot of tutorials. I, let, I read a lot of bad tutorials, actually. And this is one that was one of the most beautiful I've read. So it's uh, sort of recommended. It's pointed to by, by um, uh, by the class web page, if you go to lecture 14, you will, you will find it. 
It's divided in four parts. So the first part is actually not really relevant to these, or uh, it's about measuring, but it's less essential. Two and three are the main portions. Okay? Uh, yes. Uh, that's it. Would there be any volunteers next time uh, to talk about the project and the challenges and try to, to try to do some sort of uh, uh, office hours or advice uh, for projects uh, here? Would you be interested in doing it? Okay. You are a single group or two different groups? Uh, okay, great. Okay, so I'll leave some time for doing that because I think at this point is uh, uh, is interesting. So. Um, what can, what I can cover next time is uh, surface uh, surface drawing. I mean the high performance one. I'm not a fully expert, and it's a bit complicated due to threading. So I can do it only if there is some uh, request. Otherwise, I've uh, had requests for talking about com uh, databases on an Android and uh, uh, and content providers. Okay. And, and I will probably do it. And the other thing that I want to do is uh, maps, how to draw ma a map, which unfortunately I think I knew how to do it, but then the API changed, so I, I want to you know, get, an, uh, get a version running on my phone before I, uh, I present it to you again. Because I, because I think that from the time I did it, uh, the, the division of uh, what is in uh, part of the Google Play services and what is not changed slightly. So I'm not sure that my, my old code is still working. Any, uh, is there any other, uh, um, I mean, do you have any feedback or any comment or any question? Don't, uh, don't wait too long for starting this homework. Uh, again, you know, you know, I give it with a bit of apprehension because it should not be very difficult. Uh, um, but it does use uh, quite, um, uh, quite a, there are various moving parts. So even though I give you a prototype, uh, if the moving parts break, it may not, may not be the fastest to fix them, so to say. I, I don't know, you know, it's very difficult to, uh, to judge. So start early rather than later and complain if you cannot do it and ask questions. You know, ultimately, the only way in which you can learn is by doing it yourself and seeing it running. So, so you know, let, let's try to get it to run. I mean, the goal should be that you should be able to do all the homeworks. It's, it's it's not the goal that I measure your ability with the homework. The, the goal of the homework is that you try to do it and you actually get it to run. So let's try to to have it happen. Questions? No, everybody's happy. Okay, thank you.